Hi, I'm Tim Tyler, and this is a video about measuring the machine takeover. You might have noticed that there are many new types of entities on the planet, with sensors, actuators, processing, and information storage units. These entities consume sources of low energy and excrete heat. To illustrate what I mean, um, I have some of those devices here. The devices are very similar to animals in many fundamental respects. Although they can't self-reproduce, that doesn't seem to stop them from appearing on the planet in huge numbers. The rise of the machines has been going on for centuries now, but it's only recently that they have acquired what are plainly close analogues of animal nervous systems. Since machines have less historical baggage, they are better placed to enjoy the benefits of engineering and intelligent design than evolved organisms are. Hans Moravec has estimated that machine evolution is taking place at a rate approximately 10 million times faster than that of the DNA evolution that preceded it. However, the human body and brain still appear to be changing incredibly slowly. If this situation persists, it seems likely that the machine rise will continue until the machines are much more capable than humans are, and will thus displace them in the labour market. Already humans are having their jobs taken by machines. Bank tellers, cleaners, supermarket checkout assistants, factory workers, clerks, and so on are all regularly being replaced. Currently, many of the displaced workers can move on to better paid jobs. However, that line of retreat will not stay open indefinitely as machine capabilities rise. In the light of this, it seems prudent to consider the possibility that we will see a machine takeover in the labour marketplace, and eventually throughout the biosphere. For this idea to be meaningful, machines and existing DNA protein organisms should not merge together. A number of thinkers and philosophers do seem to predict such a merger, but the idea does not seem like a very likely one to me. Most of the existing changes have involved humans and machines working together, but not merging together. The man-machine symbiosis will probably continue to deepen, but it seems unlikely that much confusion will arise about where the man parts end and where the machine parts begin. Even those who dream of cyborgs don't usually imagine that the man parts and the machine parts will become indistinguishable from one another. It is mostly cyborgs, not cyborgs, that we see today, and there seems to be little chance of that changing much any time soon. I discuss the problems with cyborgs in more detail in my essay Against Cyborgs. In theory, humans themselves could be engineered but ethical problems and general yuck factor seem likely to work against germline genetic engineering for many generations to come, by which time the technology will probably be too late to make much difference. Somatic germline gene therapy will be more realistic, but it is also much more impotent technology. It may well be used to knock out undesirable genes and add in new ones, but again, progress will be slow and the effects are relatively minor. Gene therapy will also be a case of too little, too late. Essentially, engineering humans doesn't make much sense. Humans were cobbled together by evolution, and their design is a total mess. Mature, mature technologies often bear little resemblance to their primitive precursors. Humans are not much like the worms they evolved from. Computers are rather different from abacuses. Similarly, it seems unlikely that the engineered future will look much like today's DNA and protein world. I discuss the problems with building on humans in more detail in my Angelic Foundations essay. If there is going to be a machine takeover, one question that arises is how best to measure the rise of the machines. One of the most common ways of measuring the advance of machines has been to give them intelligence tests. Another proposal has involved an imitation game in which machines attempt to fool human observers into thinking that they're really human beings. These proposals typically concentrate on machine intelligence, perhaps on the grounds that intelligence is what has led to the human domination of the biosphere. Giving machines intelligent tests hardly seems fair when the machine intelligence has been deliberately developed so that it complements human intelligence. Humans are terrible at mental arithmetic, while machines are highly competent in the area in order to compensate for our weaknesses. It's the same with getting machines to imitate humans. That's a minority interest application for machines. It hardly seems like a fair test of their capabilities to test them in an area involving deliberate deception, where, hopefully, there will be few practical applications. 
I think more ecological metrics of measuring the rise of the machines are more appropriate. Machines occupy the same ecosystem as us, and therefore naturally come into competition with us for material and energetic resources. Society will decide what proportion of the world's natural resources are allocated to machines rather than humans. There are a variety of ways of measuring how much of the resource pie is allocated to machines. One way that would appeal to economists is to look at the cost of constructing machines and compare that to the cost of constructing humans. That would give an estimate of how much society is willing to spend on these different elements of the biosphere. Here I will advocate what I believe is a simpler method of measuring the portion of machines on the planet. I think we should weigh them. Weighing the engineered parts of the biosphere and comparing the results to the weight of the evolved parts may seem like a bit of a crude metric, however it has the significant advantage of being relatively easy to measure. In order to compare machine mass with organic mass, it is necessary to decide which elements to weigh. In some respects, this part of the proposal is more difficult than calculating the weights themselves. Does every slab of concrete count as being engineered? Concrete is little more than rock which has been chewed up and spat out again. What about a wooden bookshelf? That has clearly been engineered, however, equally clearly, it is made of organic stuff, cellulose and lignin. To help resolve these kinds of questions, I think it is useful to break the machines and organisms down into functional components along cybernetic lines. If we ignore structural elements, it can be seen that active agents consist of sensors, processing and actuators. There is a functional division of resources into these categories which appears both in machines and in organisms. The sensors take in information from the world, Processing units manipulate that information, and actuators convert output information into action. With sensors and actuators, structural components can sometimes get a little mixed in with the active ones, which can make it confusing to know what to weigh. Weighing processing elements presents a different challenge, which involves distinguishing active elements from passive storage ones. Exactly where to draw the line between a machine's processor and its storage media is not terribly clear. Lastly, there is another approach which considers weighing heritable material. Memes are heritable cultural information. This information necessarily has a physical representation, and so it can be weighed. Similarly, organisms store their heritable information largely in nucleic acids, which can also be weighed. Now, I don't have figures to pre present in this video, but I think it is clear that nature's sensors, processing, actuators and genes outweigh the corresponding engineered artefacts produced by mankind across the board. Evidently, the machine takeover has not yet happened. Finally, I would like to ask viewers to consider at what point they would agree that the primary focus of development of the biosphere had shifted in favour of the machines. If 90% of the mass of the biosphere was in machines, would you say that there had been a machine takeover? What about if civilization was 99% machine? Um, enjoy!